Welcome to Good Morning Joy. I'm your host, Sherry Elise. I hope you're ready for a really uplifting show today. My guest is Jean Trebek. And yes, you might recognize that last name, but she is here today to share her journey, not only as the beloved wife of the late Alex Trebek, but really as someone on a mission who is dedicated to sharing the good in the world. And then, of course, stay tuned for Sharing with Sherry today because we will be on the chat bench and I will be harassing people with some deep questions. It's a show filled with warmth and laughter and the kind of inspiration that just makes your day better. So grab your favorite cuppa, settle in, because it's time to share with you the good news you should know about on The Joy Report. In a surprising twist, Three sprightly seniors have spilled the tea on their secrets to living over a century. And it's a bit cheekier than bingo on a Saturday night. Meet the fabulous British trio Daisy, the 103-year-old dance dynamo, Irene, the 101-year-old nature-loving maestro, and Phyllis, the 103-year-old knitting wizard. They're not just living life, they're throwing a centennial party and everyone's invited. So, what's their recipe for their time of success? Drum roll, please. It's all about staying active, happy, and maybe keeping a boy toy nearby, as Daisy proudly confessed. Yes, you heard it right. This sassy senior has a 96-year-old heartthrob in another local care home. Daisy tells us that she can't sit still. She's rocking dance classes, yoga sessions, and cycling adventures like nobody's business. Irene, the outdoor enthusiast, is always caught dancing in the wild, while Phyllis, the knitting aficionado, is spreading the joy of yarn and pearls. But hold on to your knitting needles. Phyllis, the sage of the trio, drops the ultimate life advice bomb. Be kind and optimistic. Positive attitude is the key to life. These centenarians have redefined aging, proving that life really starts at 100. Joining me now, I have Jean Trebek, CEO and co-founder of Inside Wink, a podcast and website that's mission is all about sharing the good. As the beloved and cherished wife of the late Alex Trebek, her dedication and commitment to spreading goodness and to recognizing the innate generosity of life is nothing short of inspiring. I am so excited for you to meet Jean Trebek. Hi, Jean. Hi, Sherry. Nice to be here. Oh, I'm so honored to have you here. I'm so excited for this conversation. Uh, I am too. Good, good. I am too. I feel when I started, you know, looking a little bit more into you, when I started stalking and creeping you, (laughs) there's just like such this love and gentleness that just exudes from you. And I knew Mm -hmm. that I wanted to have this conversation. There's, you know, of course, the public stuff that everybody knows, Mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about because it's part of who you are. It is. Absolutely. My journey. Yeah. Yeah. But I also want to dive into Jean, the woman by herself. And I mean that who you are without, you know, all of the stuff that comes along with that's been part of your journey. Um, but before we even get into that, since we are both on this shared mission yeah. of spreading good, I would love to know what is good in your life right now? That's a great question. And what's really good in my life right now, I'd have to say my children. Mm. I have two amazing adult children who I'm so proud of, who just uplift me. They're very creative. They're very different in personality, but they are both very similar in their their own compassion, their own um, doing good in the world. So even though we look different on the outside, it's it's this innate goodness that that we're all sharing. I love that. And I love that it always comes back to family, to our, our connections to the love that we share with Mm -hmm. people that's really good in our lives. Yes. Um, It's such a, I love when people answer that because it's really our relationships. And when I think about joy and I I, I think about our relationships with each other. Yeah. So, so let's, um, we're going to, we'll start with Alex and we'll start, we'll start with this journey. Mm -hmm. I'll be super transparent and and say that this was 
an interesting line for me to to walk with you. And the reason why I felt that is because your journey with him, your 30 years mm -hmm. of marriage was always Jean and Alex. And you have shared him with the public for so many years. And now with his recent transition, although it's been what, three years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like? It, it does just... not feel three years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes when I talk about Alex, I still get yeah. a little uh, choked up. But no, it, it feels maybe like a year. And I know I'm not alone. I know my kids, Matthew and Emily, don't feel it's been three years. But time has really been interesting lately, yeah. um, I think, for everybody. So I was going to say, um, yeah, these few years have been yeah, just a, a blur. True. <laughs> yeah. It's been a blur. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I know that you know, you spent all this this time and, and still continue to to share mm -hmm. about your life together. And I just really want to honor that. And I want to honor you. And I want to find out more about who you are, the woman, um, Jean. And so, mm -hmm. but we'll start right now with, I'm curious where you are and how you're doing mm -hmm. now and, and, and what life looks like for you. So I, I think something major in my life was that I moved. I moved about a year after Alex passed. And I have no regrets about that because the home that we shared together was very much us, our family. And, and it was a lot of him too. He, he had a full life before he, you know, we were married. So, um, I have my own home now. I don't have to, you know, there's no compromise. If I want like a room that's all purple, then, then <laughs> that's it. what's happening, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> and, you know, I think with Alex not being by my side, I sort of feel like, like a bicycle with like losing its training wheels because mm. Alex and I were very clear in our positions as husband and wife, he did certain things and I did certain things. I actually have so much gratitude for him because I have no, I, I, I look back and I go, wow, I had no idea how much he, he actually did. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only did he, uh, host that amazing show Jeopardy, but he, he ran the finances. He took care of the home, you know, the outer part of mm -hmm. the house. And, um, and I, I just miss having that partnership. So I am learning how to be my own confidant and my yeah. own uh, support system. Which so is your book is so helpful because you talk about owning, being, befriending yourself. Yeah, and yeah. that's what. Thank you for saying that. And, and this bicycle analogy, like it, that's what it feels like. That it would feel for you is this, this new direction. This mm -hmm. this taking off into the world because you were you you were together since you were how old 24 24 so you basically grew up together yeah. you molded yeah. together a, a, as a couple and now it's like all, discovering this new woman and and who you are 100 percent. Right? yes yeah. yeah well going through loss i know is just it's a range of emotions right like mm -hmm. there's you know the really good days and the days of, of i'm sure sadness and yeah. grief still like there's no real linear way to deal with that. And I know that you come from a, a you're very spiritual, right? You're, yeah. Yeah. Aren't you a licensed practitioner? I am a licensed practitioner in uh, science of mind, which um, is a beautiful, it's a religion, but it's a philosophy that um, really champions the power of your thought, your thought, words, and deeds. So making sure those are in alignment and that you are not a victim of your life, even though the outer appearance, outer circumstances may not be what you are liking, but you, there is a power within all of us that can move through situations for our highest and greatest good. If, if you choose that, right. you know, if right. you choose that way. But I imagine that those kind of practices or that thinking has been helpful in your journey. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Those tools yeah. really don't, um, I don't stay in, in a low, uh, you know, a low vibe, mm -hmm. so to speak. I do know how to 
get me out, even if it's listening to a great song. Mm -hmm. You know, that's so helpful. Or taking a walk in nature, uh, calling a dear friend. Yeah, it's really about moving that energy. That just happened to me the yep. other day. I woke up in the morning. I was. People don't imagine that the joy magnet's grumpy, right. but I was grumpy, and I'm like, <laughs> oh. And so I thought, well, I could just lay here, or I could get out of bed and just go for a walk and move the energy. Mm -hmm. And then before I knew it, there I was on the phone making my videos, and like all of that had had been shifted. And right. I think that's so important what you're sharing because there are people out there who are in the midst of grief or loss or challenging things, and knowing that there's a way through with tools. Mm -hmm. um, there so, are. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's okay to feel grumpy and, mm -hmm. and very sad and very depleted. Um, and I have been there. What's been one of your practices that's really been helping you move through this transition? My girlfriends, especially my friend Allison, have been a huge boon to my healing journey. Uh, I do practice this this these lessons from A Course in Miracles. Mm. Um, so I love that. Yeah. And, and, and people like you, oh. you know, I read your book and I'm very inspired and it just takes like a little, a little something, a little sentence, something that kind of, ah, oh, yeah. So that, when, like that reminder, it's like, a, it's like a nudge or a tap. It's like, yeah, exactly. You know, we all go through grief and loss mm -hmm. in our lives at some point, but I think what makes it a little different for you is that it's very public and Alex's life was public. And so it was, it's sharing that grief with so many yeah. around the world. What is, what's that like? Has it made it easier? Is it more difficult? I think for me, it was more difficult because I am a more introverted person mm. and I really like more, you know, solitude and quiet. And I know also, at the same time, we receive so much love and so many well wishes and prayers. And, you know, it was like a double-edged sword. Yeah. yeah. I ask that because I feel like that on a personal level, I feel like that it, it would be challenging because when you're going through grief, like you love the love and you love the support, but it's yeah. a lot to show up for when you kind of just want to be inward. True. Right? It's like too much of it. I mean, you know, I love chocolate but too much chocolate is, is there such a thing like it? okay i take back chocolate okay <laughs> so i'm curious for you what did you learn about yourself um when you were together mm -hmm. and then what have you learned about yourself since he's been gone i learned about myself when i was with alex that that nurturing that feminine aspect is very important the part that's uh, receptive and more gentle and soft. And I know Alex really appreciated that in me. I know he loved coming home and me being the type of wife that was a soft place for him to land. Yeah. Now that I don't have Alex physically in mm -hmm. my life, I'm learning that I need to be more, uh, show up more get things done more on time like because when he wasn't there I went, oh i can do that later yeah but now like do it now gene you know mm -hmm. you've got a lot to take care of so uh you know just being more assertive being, yeah, yeah exactly thank you i imagine that there's a a recognition or a seeing maybe of, of, of a strength that you didn't know that you had yeah, I think, I think it's, it's emerging. It's emerging. I, I think the flame is still burning to, yeah. to, to, to get that going. But, uh, I always, it's nice to look back afterwards and go, well, you showed up, Jean. That, you know, that's, that's it. You showed up. And that honestly, I just got chills when you said that because that's everything. I feel like that's all we can do in mm -hmm. those tough moments and every moment is just to show up and yeah. be as present right. as we can be and believe that we are supported in that presence, you know? And, and, yes. and so I, I feel like that is strength. That is courage to fully be yourself and to fully show up. And that's, that's how I see you. And oh, thank you. <laughs> I think one day you'll be able to recognize that too. I, when, you know, you look back and go, have a little more time. Yeah, absolutely. I think I will look back and go, wow, I really handled that. I handled it now right. and, and don't judge it. And, and that's the thing is not judging. Yeah. I read yeah. something that you said 
that you learned that says the smallest things that I once took for granted now carry more meaning. Mm -hmm. I think that is how God keeps us in the moment. He focuses us with grace. Yeah. When your world is going through a major shift, a major transition, I think the saving grace is is gratitude for for just for right now, not taking anything for granted. And it is like that saying that the, the you know, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. So if you can be really present right now, even wow, you know, we we here you and I are. This is this is a miracle, you know, and uh there's, there's miracles all the time. Yeah. You know, so I just said to my partner this morning, I said, how crazy is the world right now in a good way that I'm going to have a conversation with you who I didn't know just a yeah, little while ago. Right, right. And just the way that our worlds, when we show up, I think fully present and how right. we bring people together. Because I know that this conversation is blessing so many that are that are watching right now that are going through something and are able to see you here right. as a beacon of someone that's getting through. And, getting through, uh, yeah. true, and, and that we do get through. You and your business partner, Allison, have created Inside Wink. Yes. Can you share me? with me about <laughs> Inside Wink and the inspiration behind it? Okay, well, we began Inside Wink in 2018. And at first it was Allison and I coming together uh, with an idea of, of doing these interviews with people. It was with another friend of mine. We were doing interviews on the power of forgiveness. And I said to Allison, we have so many great interviews from, from a myriad of people. And I would, what do you think we could, I could do with these? And she, she was like, yeah, I get it. You know, I just, I don't see it being another talking heads mm -hmm. thing about forgiveness unless there's a story that you're going to hang these little interviews on. But, um, it was Allison's idea to come up with a website. And we called it Inside Wink. That was Allison's great idea. And we decided to take some of those little interviews and intersperse them throughout the website so people could actually hear these beautiful little sound bites of the power of forgiveness. And then it just mushroomed and grew to beautiful stories and recipes and uh, interviews with people like yourself. And, uh, and now we just focused on the podcast because we seem, we saw that that was of great interest. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a beautiful mission. I have perused it like mm -hmm. through the recipes and I don't even cook. <laughs> or I don't, well, my cooking is like just add some crushed red pepper to give it flavor. <laughs> That's my extent of cooking every dish. But from the recipes to the articles to the interviews, there's mm -hmm. just so much. There's just so much good. Because there, there is right? so much good. Thank you. There's so much good in our world. And there, I, there really is. It doesn't have to be like yours is an obvious platform. Inside Wink is more obvious. But we're all doing good. That When you hold the door open for somebody, you're doing good. Yeah. There's so much good in this world. And if we we focus on that, that's that's what's going to really uh, start to manifest more and more. Absolutely. And it's it's really putting the spotlight on it. And, th and that's what right. I feel like you're doing because sometimes it has to be pointed out to people like because we focus on the things that we believe aren't going well right. or, or that we lack. Yeah. And it's such everything that you said. I actually did an episode where we did one of the joy reports and just pointing out, you know, someone holding the door, passing the salt shaker across yeah. the table, saying thank you, the cashier smiling at you, that yeah. there's all these little moments of goodness all the time. Yes. And if we just allowed ourselves to see that, we would, I think all of us live in a lot more beautiful, peaceful, joyful world. So right. you're Inside Wink is doing that. Can you share about what I love? I just love the name Inside Wink. What does that mean? For me, it's about the power within expressing outward. So it's the love within yourself and how it expresses outward. Now, my, my dear friend, Allison, she likes, she likes to say it's more of that namaste. So mm. the God in me sees the God in you or the light in me sees the light in you. 
So it's kind of like instead of the prayer, it's like the, it's the, the wink at each other. Your soul yeah, your soul's like, winking almost. Right, exactly. Because like, we always just look to the outside. Oh, is that pretty? Mm. Oh, that's ugly or that's good or that's bad. And we're in duality. We're in judgment. Yeah. And the inside is just pure love. I mean, the outside is nice too, but mm -hmm. the inside is what we're really focused on. Like, yeah. what's going on within you? Was there anything that you were, that in a good way has uh -huh. really caught you by surprise doing this? I would say the most fascinating thing is that people say yes to talking with <laughs> Allison and me because we're That's like, what I think too. <laughs> we're like, wow, we just, we just spoke to Lee Harris. Uh -huh. I mean, look at him be so, generous and so yeah. every like he's like an everyday guy and then and and you and you you know you said yes to being on our podcast and mm. uh so we just feel that we're in this this vortex of of love yeah yeah do you feel that doing this kind of work is really helping in your own healing 100 percent. yeah absolutely i imagine because yeah. you're just surrounding yourself with good that yes it, yes and i think when you're a sensitive person you really need to make sure you surround yourself because this world can be very uh convincing that that there's not a lot of good right yeah. now that we should all run for the hills and and not shine our light and not share and be very protective and suspicious and worry uh and that is the antithesis mm -hmm. of how we really the world needs our light the world needs our joy and our love and that's and that's honestly why i asked you one of the reasons why i asked mm -hmm. you to be on the show is because when the world can be pulling you in so many directions and you are experiencing what you have been for the last few years uh that it is can feel easier to just shut down but instead you're showing up and you're shining even brighter during this times. And I think that that is so inspiring for everybody that's watching. Um, and it does take, I'm going to say it, a strength to be able to do that. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah. It, it does. Cause it's easy just to, you know, want to hide, hide out. You just launched, I think recently the Alex Trebek fund, right? Do you want to talk a little right, bit about that? Right. So, um, the Alex Trebek fund is a fund to raise awareness, raise finances to help scientists discover a, um, a cure for cancer, pancreatic cancer, specifically pancreatic cancer. Uh, early detection is vital for this horrific disease uh, because of where the pancreas is located in the, in the body. It's very hard to detect. So that is why most times if someone's diagnosed, it's a later diagnosis. Yeah. They always say that it's hard to detect. Yeah. So I love that this is being done and Alex is on her and everybody yeah. else that um, is going it's through, through that. It's through Stand Up to Cancer, which is an amazing organization. And I have to champion Katie Couric, who is, she's phenomenal. Uh, she's just doing so much good in the world mm. in her own brilliant light. So. Yeah. You and Allison and Katie and just all of the people that are doing and the you. good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been weird if been like, and me. <laughs> That's true. So thank we you. We don't <laughs> like that. Allison and I noticed that heroes do not like to toot their own horn. Well, yeah. You but know, I, like kind of like, yeah, okay, we're good. I mean, I, I, ju I say that I'm part of that, but it's when it's, when it's who you are, it mm -hmm. doesn't seem anything additional or extra that you're doing because it's just who you are. Right. Like it's like the everyday right. I breathe. This is what sure. I do. I show up and I make inspirational yeah. videos for people to uplift them. Right. And, and that's what you're doing. And you've uplifted us today. You've uplifted my viewers today. Your soul has You've touched You've uplifted mine. me today. Oh, <laughs> thank you. One last question before we go. Uh, what secretly brings you joy? I'm going to say I love to stop off in this little bakery um, in, uh, in the town. You and I live very close to each other. Okay. So I love to stop off in this bakery and get either a brownie or a cupcake. Oh, <laughs> I love that. And now I'm going to partake in that joy on okay. the way home. <laughs> Jean, thank you so much for being here today. <clears throat> Thank Share you. with us how we can listen to Inside Wink. InsideWink.com. Okay. Yeah. 
continued success to you, continued Thank healing, you. continued loving, continued showing up and just continued riding that bicycle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's time to hit the streets and talk to my peeps on this week's Don't be afraid um, to grow. Like, don't be afraid to do what's best for yourself, but also don't be afraid to love. I think there's a lot of cynicism nowadays, um, but I definitely think that like more people should just love each other and be open and honest about that or be, I, I think there's power in vulnerability. I think it's not about communication, it's about comprehension. Um, you can communicate with someone all day long, but if they don't understand what you're saying, then they can't meet you on that level, so. I love that. So basically what you're saying, it's about deep human connection. Yeah which were on the chat bench. It was all about communicating, so it all worked out perfectly. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Please be sure to go and share your smile and heart with someone that needs it today. I'll see you next time on Good Morning Joy, where every day starts with a smile.